Is that a breakup? Break I think we have a situation right here. On the feeling station. Welcome to The Feeling Station, a podcast that touches on breakup stories that people would like to talk about with a view to give lessons behind their experiences. We hope you find the story entertaining, but more importantly, meaningful given the lesson or lessons behind everything we're going to discuss today. We are still in the height of lockdown, you know, so it's it, it, it goes without saying that I'm grateful you said yes to coming to record this in studio. Thank you so much. No, that's all right. That's okay. Did you have a bit of trouble finding the studio? Not really. Well, I pug my car. <laughs> <laughs> I was out there looking out for your car. I'm like, yo, what's happening? There's nothing here. Uh, but she was like, yo, I'm tired of going round and round. Auntie, can you not use your sat now? <laughs> we'll leave that experience for another day. I was about to direct you again. Then I was like, nah, let me just walk up to the gate. Otherwise, I'll be here for another 10 minutes. No, do you uh, know, yeah. I, I went, I did two, two laps. Yeah. I said, mm, no, just pug. I'm not messing. I'm not Cross- messing with this. Cross anymore. over, yeah. just cross over. And no, pass. it's good. To, it's good to have you here. We uh, we obviously connected on on Instagram. Yes, we did. And and I must say, it does make a difference, especially for me, to know that not only are people listening to the podcast, but they're also making an offer to come and tell their story. Yeah, because it it helps the it would give me the energy and the zeal to keep going because this is a lot of hard work. No, and and remember when we spoke the first time, and yeah. I said. It just felt like a therapy session. Yeah. I felt like I was in therapy. I was. I had tears. Yeah. I had. I had the napkin. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so you were like, okay, let me try and give it a let shot. Let me at try and, and my let me try and do it. And then yeah. yesterday, I was like to to the men, mm-hmm. hey babes, by the way, I'm doing the podcast. Oh, and you, <laughs> you, you told your boyfriend you're doing an episode. Yeah, and wow. I was like, what was his reaction? <laughs> which one? <laughs> you take too many else. <laughs> <laughs> which one of them toads are you going to talk about? Uh, or which one? Right. Which one, Auntie? Are you? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Are you going to talk about? But yeah, yeah. Um, but he's okay with it. He, he when I when I reconfirmed it again yeah. later on, yeah. he was like, ah, "So you're actually doing it." <laughs> And then when I called him today on yeah. my way here, I was yeah. like, oh, yeah, by the way, I'm just going to do the episode. He was mm-hmm. like, so you're actually doing it. <laughs> and I'm thinking, say, I've told you three times. <laughs> I've told you three times. I don't know whether you, you know, and I was like, so is, is, are you, are you comfortable? Are you? He's like, so you actually did. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> yeah, you're like, listen, yeah. it's happening. It's right? happening. You know, I've okay. already confirmed. So it's happening. It's happening. Okay. Oh, so stuff. we pray that, um, yeah, he listens. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he doesn't catch feelings. <laughs> Yo, he, well, he no, he should, he should be all right. No, nah, okay. he'll, he'll be all right. He's, re- he's really supportive. And I don't think most of like the story that I'm about to say, mm-hmm. um, we, we've spoken about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so so it's not something that's foreign to him. No, anyway. no, no, no. Okay, no, we've we've spoken about it. For for me, that's a plus. Yeah. So um, so so thanks once again. Um, there's two great things happening with the podcast. One is becoming very popular. Um, engagement levels have gone up, and it's because of two main things. One, we do our best to try and keep you anonymous, mm-hmm. which brings me to the fun part where I give you the name that I'm going to refer to you. Okay. As during the you know for the duration of this episode, so I've gone over to South Sudan because every name we give is African. Okay. So uh, South Sudan, and your name is Kazima, right? K A Z I M A. Okay. Now you could either remember it as Kazima, or you could shorten it to maybe something like Kaz if you want to. Um, K Kaz. K yeah, K Kaz, whatever. Um, so yeah. that's up to you, yeah. right? And that name means one who controls anger. Yo. Yes. So I I wasn't controlling no anger then. Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> you unleashing the run. I wasn't controlling. I thank God for growth. <laughs> uh, so 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 does this is this name really relatable then to you at that time? Um yeah, I, I think it's something that I've had to learn okay. um, to 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 control my anger. So you got a bit of a temper uh, on you. No, not really no. Mm. Um it was I think when you're in situations where people trigger you yeah. and people... People get you to a point where it brings out the worst in you. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think, uh, well, it will all make sense once mm-hmm. once I start um, 
um, talking about the story. Yeah. But that thing of um, you say something to hurt mm-hmm. the other person mm-hmm. um, and the other person say something worse and then you say... And then say, it just escalates. Yeah, and okay. then it just escalates and the power of words. And I think mm-hmm. a lot of us um, in relationships, we underestimate the power of words yeah. and how that impacts the other person on the mm. receiving end. So, you yeah. know, it's interesting you say that because someone once said to me, I would rather have somebody give me a punch to the face because I know it will hurt for that time and maybe for a couple of days and then it's gone. Yeah. Than for someone to say words that cut deep because they're a constant reminder within my brain of yeah. what somebody did and said. So what you said there is very Yeah, relevant. and it, it is true. It's, it's one of those things where I, I'll give an example. Um... I was a, like I was a size ten, mm-hmm. then I was a size eight, ten, mm-hmm. um, UK clothes, and this guy always used to call me fat, and wow, it, it it's just in deep with me even yeah. now, when um, when when you have someone that appreciates you for mm. who you are, mm. and I still remind myself that this even seven years. After we, you know, you split. This, we split up or whatever, um, I still feel fat. Mm. That's that's the power of words. I think if it was a punch, yeah. you know, it, it would be. Yeah, it would hurt at that point. And maybe it, you know, I don't days. think I would still remember no, it, but no. it's something that within me, I've always known myself yeah. as fat. Whether I've gone, you know, people are like, oh, you really look good and you've lost weight. Mm. And I look at myself and I'm like, I'm fat. Mm. And then when I look at my pictures from like the time I was with him and I'm mm. like, yeah, actually, yeah, no. no. That was out of order. No, you, know? you sis, yeah, yeah, you yeah. were beautiful. Mm. So it's it's things like that. Um, okay. Yeah. Nice. So what are you going to call this guy? Kumbi. Kumbi. Mm-hmm. Uh, K-U-M-B-I. Yeah, Kumbi Rai. Okay, Kumbirai. Now, for the benefit of those who don't actually understand what Shona uh, means, what does that name mean? Kumbirai means ask for or mm-hmm. begging, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, know, you know, ask for help. Yeah, ask for help, um, yeah. That, that sort of thing. Okay, great. So, it's, it's interesting that the, the two people are both Ks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we've got uh, Kazima, who's yeah. you, and then we have Kumbi, who's, yeah. um, who's the guy. Yeah. Now, the second thing that's made this podcast uh, do as well as it has and continues to do as well um, as it is, is the lessons that people learn from, from, from experiences like the one you're going to share today. So what would you like people to learn? What lessons would you like them to get after listening to your episode? Um, one of the biggest lessons, I think, after the relationship ended, um, I learned the power of healing mm-hmm. within yourself um, before you move on to someone else. Okay. You need to be able to heal and be able to be by yourself, mm-hmm. not needing that validation so 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 you know power self-healing you know heal first and be by yourself without validation yeah okay um and then the second thing is i think this is for people that are looking into relationship i.e your friends your you know be be it your cousin be it your friend be whoever if you see someone in a relationship that um that is abusive Mm -hmm. or don't give up Mm -hmm. on that person okay continue um supporting them uh even if you feel that that relationship is not good for them Mm -hmm. even if you feel that that relationship is um you know you're seeing all these abusive signs and they're not seeing it yeah it takes a lot for someone to leave a very abusive relationship of course um and as a friend keep trying keep and you know don't be judgmental don't just be there to listen if they call you crying you know just pick up the phone and reassure them that you're there i i really like these so the first one that you have is one you know focus on the power of self-healing you know heal yourself first and be okay with who you are and then secondly you know friends really need to continue supporting you even though you are in your darkest space and they shouldn't be judgmental yeah you know that's a really powerful lesson because for a lot of people who are in these situations they can't see that they're in that situation yeah. 
And um, I, I guess the, the, the more fickle friends who don't have that bond with you will fall off. And yeah. these kind of experiences will then just validate who your real friends yeah, are, are anyway. Yeah. So that's really powerful. Thank you. Thank you for those. So let's get into the meaty bits then. So uh, Kaz and Kumbi, where did you guys connect? So I was in a little town um, mm-hmm. just out of, outside outside of London. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were going. So I was in college and he was at uni. But our college campus... Um, our department was part uh, was part of this uni campus. Yeah, yeah. So we shared the library. We shared um, we shared everything. Okay. Our reading spaces, whatever. Yeah, yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. So we were in the library. Mm-hmm. I noticed just this guy walking by, and I'm like, mm, You're like okay. mm, hello, hello. Mm-hmm. Not not bad, not <laughs> bad. Um, then we got on the same bus mm-hmm. uh, that day, and I was like, This must oh. be a sign. <laughs> There's nothing like a sign. <laughs> Don't believe. <laughs> There's nothing like a sign. <laughs> nothing like a sign. Yeah. Um. Then we bumped into each other in the high street. We were in a shop. Um. We were in boots. Mm. So I was I was in the um in the ladies aisle, and he was walking with a friend of his. Mm-hmm. And she was buying something as well. Mm-hmm. There, and I was like, huh, third time, third mm. time lucky. Mm. Yo, mm, mm, I see you. And this was within the same day. I was like, hi, okay, all right. Mm. Um, so we, I then he he lived in another little town, mm-hmm. um, and I lived in that town where the university was. Yeah. So um, I decided. Just get on your bus. Don't you know the Dutch? Ah, let me just follow him. You know he might uh, uh, see me again. Uh, uh, so you decided to follow <laughs> no, him? No, no, no. I was saying, you know, when your head is saying, ah, I've seen this guy. Yeah, this is a fire. Like, should I just go? Hi. Hey, okay. Do, okay. Do okay I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do I know you from somewhere? All right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. One of them ones. <laughs> one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do I know you from somewhere? No. Yeah. I was like, ah, no. Get on the bus and go mm, home. Mm. Went home. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next day I was in the library and this was um, like towards the end of March, which is um, exam period and yeah. everyone is finishing uni doing the final presentation. Mm-hmm. So he was in his final year and I was doing my, um, and my course was a year. So mm. I was doing an access course. My course was a year. So I was finishing that July. Mm-hmm. So we were both finishing whatever studies that we were doing. So I saw him in the library the next day. And then I said, ah, you keep following me around. Oh, you say that to him? Yeah. And then mm-hmm. he was like, no, I'm not. You keep following me around. Ah, so you had noticed each other. And then I was like, ah, what? And he was like, this is the fourth day. And I'm thinking, but... <laughs> <laughs> Day not one and two. You were you were you was by yourself. <laughs> Day one and two. You were by yourself, sir. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So we we he was like ah. Anyways, I'm going for lunch. Do you want to come through? Mm. So we went for lunch. Sat there, ate. We were talking, talking, vibing. Then and then I found out he was from Nigeria. I was like mm. ah. You know, Yoruba demon, and I'm, <laughs> of course, that's the first thing that comes out of your mouth. I was like, Yoruba. He was like, No, I'm not Yoruba. I was like, ah, Okay, we think you know. <laughs> Thank God, <laughs> it's not. A, it's not a Yoruba demon. Yeah. Um, so I, I just we we vibed, vibed. He was mm-hmm. like, Ah, can I have your number? Mm-hmm. Got home that day, we were on the phone like the whole night. And my wow. mom used to work nights. So I, I would be by myself at home. Um, and the next week, he was like, oh, can I take you out on a date? We went cinemas. You know, don't ever take me to a cinema because I'm just that person that sleeps. I, I Oh, I, one of those. I, you know, the moment I, you sit down, <laughs> 10 minutes and you're gone. I am gone. I, and I was thinking, you know, okay. So we got, like, after the date had finished, the guy mm. was like, oh, was it boring? And I went, no, it's not you. <laughs> it's, it's me. me. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's not you, it's me. <laughs> um so I was like, ah no, 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 no. I'm just I'm just really terrible. Like yeah. even till today, I, I 
my it, boyfriend has been trying to take me on a date to a cinema and it, I just it, it avoid it. Happen. Yeah. I just avoid it. I'm just like, Mm-mm, no, no, no. Yeah. I know myself. I will go I'll there crash. Yeah. and sleep. So yeah. I was like, hi. So he's like, oh, no. So this was what? Towards the end of March, April, everything. We're vibing. Um, Starting of May, man's is like, ah, oh, sis, I've been, I'm feeling you. Like, mm. you, you're the type of girl that you know, you know that just, I want to be with. Yes. Yeah. Um. So he was like, yeah, you know what? I want you to be my girlfriend. Mm. And I was like, okay, first relationship here. So I had just moved um to the UK, two thousand and nine. Mm. Yeah. So I was like, okay. Okay, all right. You're, this, like, you're this, like, yeah, this is going well. Yeah, this, yeah. Uh, this I can do. Yeah, this, yeah. this, this is all right. Yeah. Um, so we we were dating. Everything was okay. So for me, I think a red flag started coming um, or started popping up uh, in towards June. Um, That's and, just a month in. Yeah, and for me. That that thing about lack of, so I think for me it was more of um, give someone an opportunity. You're only just starting. Oh, okay. Um, and 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 now in hindsight, I'm like, don't even ignore those red flags because from, yeah, from day one, day you know? one, just set you like don't don't. The minute what was what was that first red flag then? So we were supposed to go out, mm-hmm. um, and he's like, oh no, I'm not available. And I was like, oh, okay, all right. So, um, did you did you ask why you're not available? I, I, I you know, I was, I was just like, ah, don't be. And the thing is, because I really wanted this to work, I didn't want to come across as the controlling, the, the nagging, you know, the nagging kind of girl. girlfriend. Yeah, okay. And you know, you're like, ah, first relationship, you know, tra-. like this Tread wasn't my first relationship, yeah. but like this is my first relationship. Your first one, yeah. Yeah. The, yeah, 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 just. Keep it calm, sis. Don't, don't do the, mm. where are you going? Who are you with? What, what, what? So I said, oh. I mean, but just by looking at your body language, as you said that it bugged you, you know? No, it did. It definitely did. Yeah. But then I was like, ah, anyways, this was, you know, the back, what, this was 2011. So mm. Facebook was it was at its peak. Yeah. So everyone, wherever you go, you check in. Yeah. Whatever you're doing, you're checking in. So did that mean you went to, to look at where he was checking <laughs> so in? So me, I'm sis is bored at uh, at home Mm -hmm. you know your boyfriend has cancelled the date that you're looking forward Mm -hmm. to you're just scrolling on the facebook playing bang bang. bro is doing something there was like a restaurant Mm -hmm. in this and this is like a very not exclusive restaurant but it was very expensive for our budget because gotcha. we were students. Yes. Right. Yes. So it was that restaurant like, where mm, you you're thinking you have to kind of save up money or whatever you're earning for a good month or so for you wow. to be even considered to to afford it. Right. So I was like, what is he doing there? Mm. So obviously sis picks up a phone. You no, know, he's not it's just declining calls. Blackberry days. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I miss oh. those days, man. <laughs> those phones were the best. What was that? What was? Is it Blackberry, Blackberry Messenger? Th- yes, there was that, BBM, that, and yeah, you BBM. needed the Blackberry pin. You needed yeah, the BB pin exactly. to connect with someone. Yes, that one. It wasn't. Can I have your number? Can uh, I have your, your pin? BB? You see, those <laughs> days were so much simpler, man. I miss those days. So I was like, t- yeah. I'm on, t- and you know, Blackberry had the keypad. Of course, you can hear the. T- 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 <laughs> And you are going uh, in Passionately Mm-mm. typing huh? mm-hmm. I was typing Where are you? What are you doing? Mm-hmm. I know where the restaurant is It's literally 20 minutes drive from my house Considering I don't drive I don't mm. even know why I'm saying <laughs> <laughs> Considering I don't drive I'm yeah. like Where are you? Who are you with? <laughs> so there was a So was he replying all of these? He wasn't replying okay. But because When we started talking He used to talk about his neighbour This Zimbabwean girl mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I was like, Archie, obviously me investigation one oh one, uh I will investigate I will tell you where you are, who you're with, what you're doing, connect dots and what what what. Jeez. So I just said, you know, the only other person would be his sister or his mum or this sim girl. Those are the three people that 
uh, connected yeah. enough to be with yeah. him at this place. Yeah. So I went on the sister's uh, Facebook. She hadn't updated anything. Went on the mom's. Hadn't updated anything. The Zim girl checks into the same place. I text. Hey, I text know. who? Text the guy. No, the guy. Could I know you're with this girl, right? Yeah. Could the um. At this place, yeah. and uh, and he just doesn't reply the whole night. Next day, you no. Know, did, did you manage to sleep that night? <laughs> <laughs> what is sleep? <laughs> sleep was nowhere to be found. What is sleep? Stress. What is sleep? I have to ask you this question though. You could have avoided all this stress if you had asked the you know the question. Oh, you're cancelling. Why are you cancelling? What are you going to do instead? I could have, but 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 I guess you've explained it. You know that you didn't want to be the nagging girlfriend. Yeah, but you became the nagging girlfriend anyway. Because, because I had evidence, though. I okay. had evidence of I can see you doing something with someone yeah. else. Yeah. So now I have every right to question you. Because what I've, you're got, do- I've got the yeah. material and evidence to to yeah. go with. So okay. I'm like, sleep did not come. Hmm. Shame. What is sleep? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, you know. Uh, I watch crime investigation channel. Mm, I watched mm. it that whole night and I had so many scenarios. Of, <laughs> when I see this boy, what am I going to do? <sighs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> Plots were getting thick. I was like, what am yeah. I going to do? Mm-hmm. So next day, and then we had, um, we just had exams. Mm-hmm. So he didn't have exams that day. Okay. So I get on the train, go to, to, to the town that he lived in um, but I couldn't go to the house because the mom didn't know me and and the sister didn't know me so you can't just turn up and start shouting at someone at their house so what were you hoping would happen? I don't know just a miracle you know <laughs> <laughs> just a miracle I don't know I don't know what was going through my head yeah so you're obviously very upset. I, I you're, was you're, angry. And you're probably potentially operating on adrenaline. Everything was like heightened. So I, I then called on my way there. I was like, ah, meet me at this, this, this place if you want to save this relationship. Mm. So I was like, ah, you, I get off the train, walk to the... I, I knew where his house was. Yeah. I could have walked there and just knocked and said, oh, I'm, I'm his friend. Yeah, but you just couldn't but do that. I just... Yeah. I couldn't do it. And mm. I was like, ah, you know what? It's it's um it's all right. It's you know, I got there, went to the place I had said to meet. You know when you type in um capital letters, you know kuda You know, things are peak. Hey. Yeah, like peak. peak. Yeah. Yeah, peak peak mm. levels. So I was like, ah so the guy didn't turn up. He didn't turn up. Yeah, so I called him and but I was did like, "Did he respond to the message no, at all?" No, he wasn't responding. Whoa! So we then I knew if, his exam timetable. If I remember well, uh, BlackBerry Messenger. If you if somebody if you sent a message, it would have a D to say that it's delivered. Red. And, and then, then R. It, it touched on R when it's read. Red. Oh so, no! So, everything uh, was being read, but he wasn't this. He wasn't geez. responding. So I had his to be in exam timetable, and then. You know, I had my cousin, and I'm telling my cousin, this is what is happening. My cousin is just like, do this, you know. And I think also it just reflects on our maturity at that at that age. Also, what did she say you should she do? She was like, just go to the exam and wait for it. If, can, <laughs> just turn up That's before his exam. exam. He will see you. <laughs> he will not even be able to write his exam properly. He will be thinking about what he's waiting wow. for. Wow. <laughs> 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 so I went yeah. I went there I got to the uni Halfway through his exam mm-hmm. And I was like ah, I know where you're writing Your exam mm-hmm. I have your timetable mm-hmm. We shall You know We are going to address this So I waited outside um, And um, We When he came out Man's looking surprised mm-hmm. Like Ah It's you How are you And I'm like Yeah I'm alright And he's like Ah <laughs> Um, and I was like, oh, you haven't been answering my calls. What's going on? How many days had it been since the date? So it was two days now. So two days, yeah. And he was like, oh, I've been revising. Mm. I said, oh, okay. And then he was like, um, and I said, oh, let's talk. Wow, we went to 
Uh, the compass had so many places to see. So we went and sat down. I was like, what is this? And he's like, ah, oh, no, me and my friend were just joking about. And I was like, a joke? You you checked into somewhere just for a joke. It was a joke. Like, And he was like, yeah, it was a joke. We We didn't go anywhere. We were at home. And now I'm thinking, do I believe this? <laughs> one uh, one part of it is telling me believe it because you want this relationship, <laughs> and the other part is like this guy is lying to you. Yeah. Um. But then you, you know, know, you know, if anything, he's saying that the checking in was a joke. It, to me, it sounds like the explanation was the joke. Yeah. Uh, oh know? yes, definitely the explanation was a joke. But then I thought, I just thought to myself, you know, that thing of I don't want to rock this boat. So yeah, we we'll just okay. you know. This is the first thing that he has So did done. he apologize and say maybe that was a bad joke? No, you know, just so that you guys can like, like continue as normal. Why would I do that to you? Blah blah blah. You're my girlfriend. I love you. Mm. The fact that you don't even trust me flips it round. Mm. You don't trust me. You know, what's the point of being in a relationship if you don't trust me? All of a sudden you're the one who's feeling guilty mm. um rather than him. So you're now taking all of that you know, all those feelings and you're thinking, no, I shouldn't have acted the way I should have or I'm um, the way I acted or I shouldn't have done this. Man, he or, flipped the script real quick, didn't he? And, and that's what people do when um, they're very... Not, anyways... Th- when they're, they're manipulative. Yeah, they, 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 they're manipulative. I was yeah. just like, um, okay, all right, okay. Anyways, um, he graduates and he decided to go and do a master's. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was going to do it in London. Mm-hmm. Uh, my mother also d- from nowhere decided she wanted to move back to London. Oh, okay, so so yeah, you know, that's so a good it, thing. It, it's a good thing. Yeah. And I was working um, in a hotel, mm-hmm. uh, one of these really big hotels, and um, and I was doing my thing. I am I am a hard worker yeah. and. I wanted to go to uni. I didn't qualify for student finance. So I had given myself, and I had just finished my ASYE. So I had my diploma to go into uni, but I couldn't afford it because then uni, because I didn't qualify for student finance, I was an international student. So it's so just uni, a really high yeah, fees, isn't it? Uni was so expensive. So yeah. I gave myself two years mm-hmm. um, to save up mm-hmm. and pay for my uni. So... Got myself two jobs. I was working nine to five somewhere as a as a housekeeper in mm. this really posh, you know, nice hotel. And then in the evening, I was working as a housekeeper as well in another posh, nice hotel. Mm-hmm. So the money that I was getting was really good, um, and it was it was good. I was I was I knew how much I had to save every month. I knew how much I had to to give my mom to save for me every month. Yeah. Um, for me to be able to afford to pay at least two years. Yeah. Um, and then the rest would figure it out with yeah, my mom. At the time, yeah. So we moved to London. He moved to London. Um, then he didn't have a job. So, and this was before the government was uh, giving grants for masters. Mm. So... So his par- his mum um, was um, paying for his school fees, his tuition, and he had to pay his rent and his bills. Sorry, just speaking about his mum, you you mentioned early on that he hadn't introduced you to his family and stuff. Did he did he do so at some point, or did he explain why he hadn't done it at that point? He did, um, and this was um, I think in two thousand and. Towards the end of 2012, Mm -hmm. they knew about me starting of 2012, Mm -hmm. that he had a girlfriend. Okay. um, But it never been introduced. Um, And for me, I didn't have a problem with it. I just felt like if we were going, like for me as well, I think also just on my end, it takes time for me to introduce someone to my parents. Okay. Um, and so I understood that okay. whole intro. Th- it wasn't, yeah. it's something that we had spoken about and we were both agreeing that you take your time to, you know, when you're comfortable, 
you can introduce me to your to your um family and when you are comfortable you can introduce me but i yeah once that introduction i live to regret that introduction but that's that's a story later. for another day. Okay. Later. Right. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, so, so back to, um, to, to where you were, you were saying that he didn't have any, any school fees. Yeah. At the time. So his mom was paying for his school fees. Yeah. Um, and, um, his, he was supposed to pay for his rent and his bills. Um, you know, being the girlfriend, I, I helped with the, with the looking for a house closer to where he was going to be in uni. Um, and the stress of just, um, the stress of bills. And I, I was like, I work for these hotels. I get, you know, tips. I used to get good tips. Mm -hmm. Those tips can be contributing to your bills. Okay. Um, whatever tips I got, I can try and give you part of it mm -hmm. to cover your bills. And uh, he was, he was really grateful um, and so he moved to London. This was September 2011. Mm. He started uni. Um, things were going okay in uni. Um, but with uni and the degree that he was doing, there were expectations of labs and, you know, he was having to pay extra. And there wasn't any urgency in trying to look for a job because <laughs> had it covered. Okay. Oh. That's cool. I'll, I'll, I'll sort that out. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> Kay had it covered. Right? Kazima had it covered. Yes. Um, so, I had it covered. So, I was like, oh, okay. You know? Um, and it became the demands and the, I need this and I need that. Um, so, I then just said, you know, why don't I do it this way? Every time I get tips, I had two bank accounts. Right. Every time I get tips, I'll put the money in this bank account, this specific bank account that you have access to because I am giving you my card. Whoa. And then you can just you can just um, use that for food. I don't want you to wait for me to 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 to, to come to your house yeah. on my days off because I never because of working two jobs for different companies. Sometimes I wouldn't get a full day off okay. uh, in the week. So I would get, let's say, the morning off. And then I had to go to work in the of evening. Of course, yeah. Or I would have the evening off. Yeah. And then, I, but I've worked the morning. So I could go a week without going to his house. What did you think about it, it's starting to give this guy more money? And, and his lack of ambition and drive, did that send any signals to you at some point that, hmm, this could be a problem? Or you I, were so in love you felt you were supporting your boo? Um, I think it was that thing of um, he's he's telling you that we're doing this for us. And when I finish uni and you are in uni... I'm going to sort you yeah, out. Yeah, okay. this is going to be... Uh, reverse the roles are going to be reversed mm. and you i'm going to be helping you and you will help me like oh sorry i'm helping you now mm. um, <sighs> i get it <laughs> <laughs> hold on let's take a step back <laughs> you're helping me now and once i finish uni and i get a job and you would be in uni mm. it would be my turn to be helping you yeah. and 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 i thought pff, you know what, we're working together as a team. Mm -hmm. This is my relationship or our relationship. Um, so we, I kept, and on my days off, um, I would wake up in the morning, depending whether it was a weekend. Weekends, I would normally stay at home to be with my mom. Mm. Um, but if it was a weekday, I wake up in the morning, like I'm going to work normally. Mm. My mom found it weird because I was still bringing the same amount of money, but the amount of, I'm just doing overtime type of thing because oh. every time I'll be like, yeah, I'm just doing overtime today. And then I would go to his house, I would get there. And there was, I remember there was a, when you got off the train, there was a Sainsbury's. Mm -hmm. I'd go into Sainsbury's, I'd plan what meals I'm cooking that day. Mm -hmm. I'd buy my food and then I'd go to his house and meal prep for the whole week. Bro, you, you are doing a lot. So I was like, but that's the type of person but I am. But let me ask you this. What was it doing for you at that point? To be honest, I don't know. You can't remember anything it was doing for you? I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. I think I loved the comfort that I got from 
I have a boyfriend and being in a relationship that everything else and well, but what did having a boyfriend mean to you because if if I was a girl having a boyfriend for me would mean okay this guy is spending time with me he's making sure I'm happy he's treating me he's spoiling me he's doing everything to make me feel right which would make it okay for me to be making all this money giving it to him and cooking all this stuff so what was he doing for you to make you feel that way I think we we spent time together Mhm. Sometimes at whose initiative, his or yours? It was mine. Mhm. Um and it was never a and even just on my way here, um mm-hmm. I stopped at the services and I went on my on my on my Facebook Messenger and I was looking at the messages from 2012 Mhm. I would never allow someone to speak to me like that now. He was saying a lot. He was doing a lot. The amount of things that um he just used to say and you would be like hmm. I'm going I'm 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 probably going to dig into that at 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 the right moment because I'm intrigued by that I want to know uh, a bit more but The reason why I'm asking the questions that I've just asked is it feels like it's an 80-20 relationship right now where it this is. guy is giving 20% of himself and you're giving 80% of yourself. But and I'm trying to understand if there was more than just that initial thought you had to say look this is my boyfriend is my first relationship I'm going to give it 110%. Was there more to it? I think it was more of um right now is you know when you I I Personally I think it was a thing of I'm not thinking about the now because mm. right now he's focusing on his school he's focusing okay. you create excuses yeah, yeah. for someone who's not treating you right mm. and you and I did that I created a lot of excuses of he's not doing that because he doesn't have the money to you know take me out okay um they were we I think we stopped going on dates mm. um October mm-hmm. of 2011. Mhm. Remind you we started dating in May. There wasn't any, you know, there wasn't any excitement. Our dates would be I would get on the train from my house to his house. I would cook, would sit there, watch TV. It So why would he come from his to yours? Because it was always the excuse of I don't have money. But then you're giving him tips. So he's got some money he can make the effort. Yeah. Oh, I've got school work or and the thing is when you believe or when you want to think that you're in love with someone mm. you accept those excuses or you start to make excuses for them. And you know, you say, "Ah, no, he's not coming because yeah. he's really busy." Yeah, yeah. Or he's not coming because he's doing this. But uh, no, the person is checked out of that relationship. Yeah. You're just a convenience. Well, at the, I was just going to say at this point it sounds like you are madly in love with this with this guy. Well, that's what it feels like because you're doing so much so freely, so willingly. Mm-hmm. What did he have on you that got you so hooked? What was it that got you so so into this guy? I don't know. It, I think it was that thing of Remember when I said when someone reminds you constantly that you're so fat or you're so this that you 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 yourself you 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 have low self esteem self esteem yeah and let's you, just let's just talk about that a little bit mm. what made him call you fat what I had re- happened I remember we were what were we oh. Yes, we went to Blue Water. Mm. Yeah, we went to Blue Water. Mm-hmm. Um and we wanted to get um this was during Christmas. Um and so this is December mm-hmm. 2011. Mm-hmm. And um and you know when someone is just doing it in a funny way, joking way, "Oh, I'm going to the gym. Yeah, you should come with me." <laughs> <laughs> 
So that was, yeah. you know, like when I look back now, mm. it wasn't just that day that started everything. Mm. Like that started the whole, you're fat. He had dropped hints so many times, but you think, ah, someone is joking. How many times do you walk in a relative's like, eh, what's Simba? Yeah, yeah you put on weight. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I just thought, I thought, I thought mm. nothing of it. Mm. So we went to Blue Water and we were shopping, Christmas shopping. And I went into this shop, River Island, and I wanted to buy a dress. Um, and we were going to... You know, the annual London fireworks, mm-hmm. what, 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 mm-hmm. that thing. Um, so I, I wanted to get this dress. So mm. I got, and they had it in a size six and eight. Mm-hmm. I was floating between eight and ten okay. at that point. Um, so I picked up the eight confidently, mm-hmm. went because that's what I used to wear. Mm-hmm. But obviously, sometimes dresses, depending on the material and what, what, what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went in, we're sitting in, we are in the changing rooms and and I'm trying to sift the stress, you know. It's just do not the happening. Sh- shaky, shaky. <laughs> 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 you know, yeah. it's not happening. So I asked him to go and check if there was a size 10. Mm. And he came back and he was like, there's no size 10. Um, the dress doesn't have, and he really wanted me to wear this dress. Um, so I was like, oh, like... You know, so he then came and I was like, oh, come and help me. Because sometimes the zip needs, it, it a needs little. a village. <laughs> <laughs> the zip needs wow. a village. Wow, okay. <laughs> it needs 20 people. Yeah. So I was like, oh, you know, um, come in and help me you know, do yeah, the give zip. Me hand, yeah. And then he just went, well, the zip is not going to go up. You're fat. And I was like, mm. where did that come from? And he's like, can't you see it? And I'm thinking, wow. What do you mean? And he's like, yeah, you you are fat and you need to lose weight. And I'm thinking, I'm a size 10. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, from that day, every time. Out of curiosity, before you go on. What size was the other girl he checked in with into the hotel? I mean, not not at the restaurant the other time. She she I don't know what size she would be, but, but from the from was, the yeah. pictures, she would be a size eight. Mm, okay. Yeah, about a size eight. So 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 it's not like he had a preference for people who were in the size six range no. because this girl didn't sound to be you know in that range. But every time from that day that mm. he said. You're fat or you're big or oh it, you've gained stuck. a little, little it just reinforced it. Yeah. It just reinforced the feeling of yes, you are fat. What else did he say to you? Because in your in your messenger you said he said some things that you looked back and you're like, you'd never let anybody talk to you like that again. So things we would have conversations and then he would block me. And then you know when you when you're begging someone to either un- like unblock you or either he's blocked me on whatever BBM or mm-hmm. whatever and you're like, now you're using another sauce to try and get in touch in with, with him. him yeah. um, and he would just be like, ah, no man would want you. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm, you know, I'm the only person that would want you or would want to date such a person like you. And it just sticks. It sticks with... Did you stop believing some of the things you were saying to you? Yeah. And... Even till today... Hmm. Some of the things, I think... um, And I thank God the... um, I healed. But you never forget. You yeah. can heal, but you never forget. Mm. And I don't... Um, some of those things, I had to take time from my last relationship into my current relationship to heal, not just from that, current, from that previous relationship, yeah. but to heal and to find peace with the things that he said to me and the things that he did to me. So I can I can see this is very difficult for you right now. Mm. 
but it's okay yeah. because your your very first lesson was talking about the importance of you actually making sure that you've healed and that you're okay yeah and that you're not trying to seek validation from from somebody else yeah so what it is that you're expressing to me now the way that it comes across is not actually a sign of weakness or feeling bad about what's happened yeah right those tears for me right now feel like a celebration of you being able to get over that hurdle yeah right and well done to you for that and and you know i think one of the things that pushed me to do this was to tell whoever whoever is hearing this or to tell that young girl or mm. young boy or whatever stage you're in in your life that you will find someone that will love you for who you are yeah the f- a person that sees the perfection in you mm. and i even till today sometimes i feel the moments where and and i i it hurts me because i loved hard and i i gave it my all mm-hmm. and my current boyfriend is not able to experience the type of person i was in 2011 because of what that person did to me yeah he experiences the nervousness the person who who comes across as very cold because of what someone else did to me mm. and does not experience the lovely funny the um the person who always go out of your way to do something for you um because i'm scared that's what that person did to me yeah um it um and i thank god that i found someone so patient mm. patient to break down the walls patient to give me a million chances when i get things wrong patient to sit down with me when i just don't feel like talking yeah that's a gift from god you know and that's a comment i'm only making because i know a lot of my friends who have described the scenario that you have and every other guy that they've met has literally given them one chance and like they're like we all this girl just doesn't have what i'm looking for they cut them off and that's it yeah right so the gentleman that you have now you know i'm i'm really grateful and thankful that you said you're happy that he's such a patient man because having those two words in that sentence is becoming more and more difficult to have patient and man all in the same line. Yeah. And I think you need to celebrate that a million and one percent. He knows I love him. He knows I'm grateful. And he knows that and one of the things I think in our initial stages of talking mm-hmm. I say to him I want a person or a man who's patient yeah. to break down those walls that I've built for years because one person said this or one person said that. So, And so so can I ask you this? How patient are you with yourself? Because it almost feels as if you're not allowing yourself to be yourself. I think I have been patient with mm-hmm. myself. Mm-hmm. And I know that um it will take time to get back to where I was. It's not an instant thing. No. Um and the thing that the beauty of my relationship is we communicate about even just triggers some of the things that let's say he does something mm-hmm. that triggers me to that point or yeah. back to to where whatever happened you were before yeah yeah i would tell him mm-hmm. right there babes this triggers me and you just say yeah and i know i'm sorry i did that or let's talk about it but how nice is it to get that you know that 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 response i'm sorry it does 
I sometimes I'm like, hey, yeah. where did you come from? Yeah, it, exactly. <laughs> and and uh, and you know this, you know, let's forget about what but what but what has happened in the past and just focus on on the current because sorry doesn't happen these days. It just doesn't happen. So in my line of work, right? Mm-hmm. One of the things that I've been taught is that do not ever write an apology in an email. Mm-hmm. Because what that does is give a form of an admission of guilt in quotes. Yeah. That is what it is. Bang, and we have to stick to that line of working. And so when somebody says sorry, yeah. you know, it's it's a real wow factor for me now. And, and, and this is coming so naturally and so easily from this guy. Yeah, he's... Do you know when 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 he's th- the first time he he said it? I yeah. was like, "Do you know that face of?" Mm. Did, yeah, did, yeah. You know, did that just happen? Did it, what? Yeah, you said what? Um, but I think he understands. Yeah. Um, and because I was open with him from the word go, mm. this is who I am. This is what has happened to me. Now. Why were you open? Because I I just didn't want to spend time, you know, messing about and and then things start coming out and you know, sometimes a lot of the things that we do is explained by either the past or things yeah. that have happened to us before. Yeah, yeah. And and I just wanted to say, you know, if I'm triggered by this, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. this is what has happened to me in the past. Or if this is, you know, the reaction you get from me and yeah. you don't understand why is she reacting like that. Or if I do this, yeah. this is this is my life, this is the story, or this has been my journey. And So I want to tell you what that comes across to me like. Yeah. Okay. If if somebody was to tell me that from the onset they're acknowledging and realizing that there's a problem and it's not a problem that they're particularly proud to have or want to have. Mm -hmm. So in a way, you're kind of communicating to them, look, I have this thing that I don't know what to do with it Mm -hmm. and I don't want it to be a problem for us. So if it does trigger us, please understand. Yeah. So you really want to get rid of whatever you had in the past. Yeah. It feels to me like you really, really, really want to do and you've got the best person to make that happen. Yeah. I couldn't have put it <laughs> any better. So I think a lesson we could add to this whole thing, which I think is the most important out of everything here, is that you need to learn to forgive yourself. Yeah. I, I'm I'm not sure you have. I do. I... Because what you said to me now is you feel you need to have time. But how much time do you need? Okay, when did you break up with this guy? 2013. 2013. So it's been seven years since you broke up with this guy and this thing continues to be a leg iron. I struggle. Sometimes there are moments that I struggle with what happened. Yeah. And sometimes there are moments where whatever has happened in the past made me or changed me. Um... And okay, I so don't want that to impact my future relationships. So before you add on to that, it changed you. So you've got a before position and you have an after position mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. Where would you as Kazima rather be? In your previous form of yourself or in your current form? I think in my current form. So you'd rather be in your current form? I wouldn't... What is it about your current form that you prefer to the old version of you? The strength I have. Mm -hmm. The strength I have to be able to, even though someone has hurt me so much, I'm still able to give myself out there or put myself out there. So so that's a really good strength. Yeah. Right? And you don't come across to me as somebody who's very defensive by nature. Right? It sounds to me like you're only defensive because of circumstances that happened in the past. But you've just spoken about strength. Yeah. So within you, you have a strength to actually work and do things the way that you as Kazima want to happen. Yeah. And I think maybe it's just a question of you actually turning that switch up a little bit. You know, and to be just that little more 
focused and determined to actually make it happen the way that you want it to happen. And that's what um, I have been working on myself, but yeah. also working with my current boyfriend mm. to not to let a lot of the things that happened in the past as long yeah. as much as it makes me who I am mm-hmm. and the person I am now. Mm-hmm. I don't want that to influence a lot of... You don't so want it to, to continue to the, have that much influence yeah. and control over you. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's something that is ongoing, yeah. ongoing work. Yeah. And, um, and I am proud of my journey. You are in a really good space and I don't know or think you recognize it. I think I do. I think it's just when you... Look back mm. um, at the things that have happened. It brings a lot of the triggers. It brings a lot of emotion. It will evoke a lot of emotion. Yeah. But do I sit down every day and say, "Oh my God, this, you know, this happened to me"? No. Mm. I I I share with people my struggles yeah. and the things that happened to me, and uh, I want the next person not to experience what I experienced. So what you like about yourself the most now? Three things that you like about yourself the most. I laugh. Mm-hmm. Oh, Jesus. So you're a happy person. Oh, you are. Yeah. 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 I can see that. <laughs> right? you're, you're a naturally bubbly and happy person. And, and I got that same vibe the first time we spoke over the phone. Right? I still get the same vibe. So you're very bubbly. That's one. And you got strength. That's the quality that you've already told me. And what's the last quality that you think you really have now and you admire within yourself? I'm willing to give other people chances. And I think the person who deserves the biggest chance right now is your man. He does. Because earlier on you mentioned he doesn't get the best version of you that you were before. But you've also told me that you don't like that version. You prefer the version you are now. Yes. So I think let's let's tune in on that from Mm -hmm. today going forward. Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah. Give this guy 110% of what you have because it's coming so naturally from you yeah he gets 110 and yeah. a million percent yeah <laughs> I still cook yeah <laughs> <laughs> I still cook oh, yeah. well does it get the tips though does it get any tips he, he gets uh-huh. everything <laughs> <laughs> I still, oh, no, I this will is... still cook. I will. I'll, I'll. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I will still cook. So I have a question for you. Mm-hmm. It's a bit of a personal one. Mm-hmm. Have you thought about having therapy before? Um. Yes or no? No. Why? Because my job itself is a th- is therapy. Yo. Yeah. I walk into a therapy session every single day. <laughs> Well, from from our phone conversation, you work a lot. Yeah, I do. Right? And I think work is actually a distraction more than it is therapy. It's Mm. just a way of escaping things that you don't have to try and think about. Mm. So I'm going to ask the question again. Have you thought about therapy? No. However, I am... Do Do you think it might be something you need? I think it's something I'm open to. Yeah. I got good news for you. Mm hmm So, one of my business partners sent me a message last week, Sunday. Mm -hmm. And he goes, look, I think it's time that we move this up a notch. He says, are you interested as the feeling station in partnering with a professional therapist who actually just have sessions with people who you feel need to have them the most? Yeah. So, this couldn't have been timed any better. All right. God's timing. All right. Let's think about the, the the number of times that you met this guy in the library in Boots and you're like, hey, you know, what does this mean? Okay. This kind of feels to me like that, that it feels like there are some stars that could be aligning yeah. in your favor. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to get the, the details of what that arrangement is probably going to work like. Yeah. What it means. But it just means that you have to be open to it happening, which mm-hmm. is what you said you are. Yeah. And you've already told me as a person that you got strength, which is natural to you. Yeah. And you want to, give the right person the right version of you. Yeah. So if you're okay with it, I'm going to make contact with him. Okay. um, And see how we can move this forward. And hopefully it, uh, 
Yeah, it, but this it, is therapy. You know, yeah, yeah. Well, well, it, well, it's, it's conversation. <laughs> it's it's chit chat, right? This is it, therapy. It's, 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 it's chit chat, and and really, I I have to say, I'm I'm grateful that you allowed to bear yourself so openly to a stranger. Yeah, okay? it's my first time meeting you today. We've only had what maybe three, four telephone conversations, which you promised me, built on Where is it? Hey. <laughs> Wait, what, 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 which what? Which what? I missed that completely. What did you say? <laughs> the biltong. Oh, I promised you biltong, didn't I? Yeah. Do you Where know, is it? Do you know what? That first batch of the biltong. Salt. Oh my God, the salt was off the chain. The salt. Right, I've actually done you a health a favor. Right? <laughs> so I've, I've, I was meant to do a second batch mm. that I was going to bring, but I completely forgot because work work just took over completely. Yeah. I can so understand. here's what's going to happen. I'm gonna I'm gonna start curing the second batch tonight okay uh, it takes about four days so those who are listening yes get ready there's a biltong product that's going to be coming your way from Tinto right? hey, <laughs> in a couple of weeks um, I should have that ready by next week mm-hmm. so I'll arrange for that to be sent over to you okay alright yeah. but hey I can't thank you enough thank you so much for, for making time to come and share this on um, on the podcast okay um, I know you spoke about a second lesson about how friends need to be an important um, structure and I'd have loved to tap into that but but we're out of time, so perhaps we can move this on okay. uh, another period. Uh, most important lesson for those people who who listen to this, I think for me has come out to be have a lot of confidence within yourself to believe what you want and what mm-hmm. you want to do. And Kazima here has very openly presented that she wants nothing to do with the past because that version of her is nothing close to the version of her that she has now. Yeah. You've been listening to another episode of The Feeling Station. I'm your host, Tinto, and I look forward to catching you in the next one. Peace. Wow. What you feeling? and Tell me what you feeling. Now that it's over. and Let me talk about my feelings. Let me talk about my feelings. Yeah. Tell me what you feeling? Now that it's over. and Let me talk about my feelings. Tell me what you feeling? Now that it's over. Let me talk about my feelings. Yeah.